Today we're going to be doing some more proofs, but we're now going to be dealing with geometric shapes. And we're going to be proving segment relationships. And just just a day of heavy proofs. Um, and I love this stuff. Um, I think it's really exciting and fun to do. And we're going to be using a lot of those algebra properties just now with segments and angles and things like that. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to give you is just a reminder of our segment addition postulate. And actually, I'm going to do that segment addition postulate. We had that, and I think it was chapter one, where if point B is between A and C, if and only if AB plus BC equals AC. And remember, our abbreviation for that is segment addition postulate. We're going to be doing lots of of segment addition proofs today. That's kind of the fundamentals of what we're doing today. So geometric proofs. Um, the key to success in geometric proofs, and I have my little key there, um, is a reminder. Before you begin the proof, always collect any information you can. Your first statement should be the given. I didn't write that in there, but that's a key success. First statement's a given. That's always going to count for some points on a test. Your second statement writes something that can be assumed from the given. And I just did, I just recorded the 2.6 video and I kind of did that. I said, let's take something from the given and write something about it. And mark up your diagram. I also did that in the 2.6 video. I marked up my diagram. That helped me figure out a few things on my proofs. Okay, so let's go to our first proof. And I'm not going to lie, this is a very basic proof. JK is congruent to SH. Okay, so JK is congruent to SH. One of my keys is marking up my diagram. SH, which I've marked with one mark, is congruent to MN. So I'm going to mark that. This is actually a really easy proof. Um, and I shouldn't say that because proofs can be challenging. I remember struggling with proofs um, when I was a student. But that's why I've tried to really focus on getting those keys. First step, always the given. Again, remembering to number your steps and your reasons. Remember, these are statements here and reasons over here. Step two, okay, if JK is congruent to SH, and SH is congruent to MN, I can say that JK, and I should technically have little markings over there. I apologize. I'm really bad with that. MN by our transitive property. Okay, so very easy proof. One step, two steps technically. Okay, what you're given, you know where you're trying to get through, what you're trying to get to, I should say. I marked up my diagram. I used my given. Since SH was congruent to the same thing, I could say that they were congruent by the transitive property. Okay, example two. Given CE is congruent to FE, so I marked that up right away. And DE is congruent to EG. So notice how I marked those other segments up with two. So first write your given. Okay, so I know that FE is congruent to CE, EG is congruent to ED. So I'm going to write in some numbers. Don't worry about the numbers that I'm writing in. So let's say FE is 4. That means CE is 4. Let's say EG is 7. That means DE is 7. 4 plus 7 is 11. 4 plus 7 is 11. So this is the segment addition idea. 
because if two parts of two different segments are equal and I add them together, then I could say the entire big segments are equal. So if I take and I say CE plus ED, is equal to or congruent to FE plus EG. What did I do? I just added the left sides together. And then on the other side of my congruent symbol, I added the right sides together. So what's my reason there? Addition. Three. Again, remembering to label your steps, having your steps line up. Oh, what happened to my three? Okay. I now need to get the big segments. I know that the big segment CD is equal to or congruent to the two smaller segments being added together. I can say the same thing about FG. Okay, the two smaller segments added together equal the bigger segment. And that's our segment addition postulate. The reason I did that is notice in step two, I have CE plus ED. In step three, I have CD plus ED. So I can now substitute in CD in that piece, CD. I have FE plus EG. I have FE plus EG. I can substitute in FG. And that's substitution. Remember our abbreviation for that is that. I don't know why I wrote out the whole word. So that's what I call a segment addition proof, where I have to add common segments together. Let's do a different type of proof. Not really that much different, but using different theorems. So, X is the midpoint of SY, Z is the midpoint of YF, and XY is congruent to YZ. So let's just think, before we even get started, start thinking, okay, what do I know? I know midpoints. Okay, I know the first thing they told me were midpoints. I need to know something about midpoints. Well, I know midpoints, X breaks this up into congruent segments. I've marked this with one, so this has to be marked with one. And Z is the midpoint here, so that has to be marked with one. So I have all these segments equal. I need to somehow figure out a way to get that segment there equal to that segment there in a formal proof. So first we start out with our given. Given is always your first step. And you're welcome to write If you want, you can write the whole given. I'm not going to choose not to in this case because I want to use my given. I'm going to use those pieces of my given. And I'm going to say then that SX is congruent to YXY and YZ is congruent to ZF. And since those, those all came from this given, and the same reason, I can write them in the same step, and that reason is midpoint theorem. Now I'm going to write the second part of my given, xy is congruent to yz. And 
Now my fourth step. XY is equal to SX. So I'm going to substitute in. YZ is equal to or congruent to ZF. What's my reason there? Substitution. Okay, let's do one more proof. This is what I'm going to call a segment subtraction proof. I have JL, I'm going to mark that with one, congruent to KM. Notice how, the, how they share a common piece. What am I trying to prove? I'm trying to prove here JK is equal to LM. So write our given out. Okay, so I've written my given out. Now, look at my diagram. KL is common in both of those larger segments that are equal. So JL can be broken up into, I'm going to use an equal sign there. JL can be broken up into JK plus KL. KM can be broken up into KL plus JK. I'm sorry, LM. I can't write today. This is the last video I have to record today to meet my goal of recording videos. Segment edition postulate. Now, for step three, okay, I know JK is congruent to KM. So I can substitute these right sides in into step one. So I can say JK plus KL is equal to KL plus LM. And that is substitution. Now, from here, notice what's common. KL is common. So if I subtract that from both sides, if I subtract that from both sides, I get what I needed. So again, this was what I call a segment subtraction proof. Okay, okay. Um, that is all I have for you today. Please make sure that you enjoyed the video, I should say. I was going to say something else. Um, thank you for watching my video.